Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm The King Live, and today we're going to be bringing you the long-awaited cinematic experience, five pro tips that Tens does to carry that you don't. Now, I'm the first one to admit, Tens does a lot of things, but these are the five things that stood out to me the most compared to other players in the Valorant scene, specifically what it is that makes Tens unique when compared to other players. Of course, we all know he is one of the best aimers in the game, but what is it specifically that makes him stand out? That's what we're going to be breaking down for you all today, so just stick with us and let's get into it, but be before we do, let's introduce our question of the day, which is which Valorant character do you think is the best at saving money? I know it's a difficult question to answer. Something tells me Raze wouldn't be very financially responsible, but something tells me Brimstone would be okay with my wallet. He just seems like he's a nice guy. Anyway, moving into it though, what you've all been waiting for, the very first thing you'll notice Tens does a lot is he almost always opts to take the high ground for his team when he can. Most players know that it's generally better to have the high ground in most games, and Valorant is no different. When you have the high ground of Valorant, you make it very difficult for the enemies to pre-aim you, which obviously will increase your odds of winning a fight. Tens will pretty much take the high ground every opportunity that he gets in matchmaking, assuming that it is a safe decision to do so. This is incredibly noticeable on maps like Icebox since there's so much elevation, but it's very prominent on even maps like Split and Haven as well. Pretty much any chance Tens can get to throw off the enemy's crosshair placement, he will take, because although he is an incredibly strong aimer, none of that matters if you don't play the game with strategy. Tens doesn't want to take fights that are favorable for his opponents. He wants to give himself the best opportunity to win every single fight that he takes. It's very easy to pre-aim a target on the ground because the location where you will need to place your crosshair to do so is fixed. You aim at head level and you only need to adjust left to right depending on where your enemy is. However, when engaging with a target above you, you need to adjust your crosshair placement on a vertical axis as well depending on how high your target is. When you couple this with the fact that it's just less common to see targets on elevated areas, this is exactly why it's more difficult to land kills on targets above you than it is to land targets on the same level or below. And that's exactly why Tens takes advantage of this at every opportunity that he can. Now, before we move on to the next thing that sets Tens apart from the competition, if you you guys are serious about improving, I highly, highly recommend that you check out skillcap.com. We have up-to-date lineups, courses on how to improve with all agents, smurf commentaries where a higher ranked player walks you through how to carry in your rank, and so much more. Come join over half a million satisfied members, improve that KDA, and get the rank that you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Moving on to the second thing that really sets tens apart from not only average players, but even an incredible amount of pro players, he seems to always manage to keep his cool, at least in matchmaking he does. This is probably one of the most notable things that stood out to me about Tens, honestly, that I believe a lot of players can benefit from. I can't speak for his professional matches, of course, because I don't get to sit in on those comms, and I'm sure there are times when Tens does actually get frustrated in this game. However, for the most part, when watching him, he comes off as very calm and mostly just happy to be streaming and playing the game. Now, obviously, there's a difference in mentality between a player like Tens and yourself. He's a top-tier pro player who has already proven himself in the big leagues, and he's playing to an audience of thousands of people who are literally giving him money. Yeah, under those circumstances, it's probably a lot easier to not get frustrated in his games. He literally has nothing to prove to anyone. However, there are still professional players in the Valorant scene who are in the exact same position as Tens, but still seem to constantly be molding in their games. Now, don't get me wrong, getting frustrated in competitive games is definitely normal, but it's also no secret that getting frustrated often leads to tilting, and I don't think it's any coincidence that Tens is one of the best players in the game while also seemingly being one of the most relaxed players in the game. I kid you not, I watched Tens play in a Radiant lobby and get killed from the flank like six rounds in a row, and he didn't say a single word about it. I don't know about you, but I would have been mauling if I died to an uncovered flank six rounds in a row. But at the end of the day, Tens knows that it doesn't matter. Sure, if they want to win, they probably should have somebody watch the flank more closely, but it's not like they're playing a tournament match in Valorant. Now, of course, we need to flip the script and apply this to you. You're not Tens, and for somebody who hasn't proven themselves yet, these games might feel like they matter. For some people, they may only get to play a couple matches a day, and when you lose those matches, it can definitely be a bit of a buzzkill. Don't get me wrong, I hate losing as much as the next guy, but the thing I noticed most about watching Tens, and the reason I really want to drive this home, is because it's far more apparent than it is with any other player I've watched. Tens just enjoys playing the game. 
Of course he's trying to win, but he's not attached to any specific outcome in the game because he just enjoys playing FPS games and clicking heads. And this is shown by our third thing that Tens does, which is he seems to just aim train for fun. Whether he's playing aim labs, deathmatch, or even osu, Tens seems like he's always focused on improving his aim. You don't have to watch Tens a bunch to see that he's very passionate about FPS games, and watching him aim train, it's very apparent he doesn't see it as just a chore that he needs to do to keep his aim at a top level. Of course this is likely a big reason he's able to play at a top level, but it's not like he's groaning every single time he fires up an aim trainer. I was scrolling through YouTube the other day and I saw a poll that really actually surprised me from the YouTuber Red, who's a popular Yoromain in the Valorant community. He asked, how do you normally warm up in Valorant? And listed three options, aim trainers, deathmatch, and don't warm up. And 47% of people said they don't warm up before they play the game. Now, normally when I make these guides, I try to provide advice to players that is just out of the ordinary and something that you won't hear in every single guide, because I really want to provide the most value to our viewers. Telling you to aim train is not something out of the ordinary, but just to provide a bit of perspective to our viewers, 47% of players said that they don't aim train at all. Tens is one of the best players in the world and he aim trains for fun. If you aim train for even 15 minutes a day, you are already doing better than 47% of players. Recently, I've been taking the time to just sit back and enjoy not even just competitive Valorant, but I've just started to enjoy clicking heads in deathmatch and I can tell you personally, my aim has gotten worlds better than it was in the past. Finishing up on this tip, just to clearly state the point one more time though, don't just go into aim trainers or deathmatch saying, hey, this is going to make my aim better. Try to go into it genuinely enjoying them for what they are because the process of improving can be a really amazing thing. Many players play deathmatch to improve their aim, but that doesn't mean you can't just play a few DMs for fun too. Just because aim labs makes for a great warmup doesn't mean you can't log on, play a bit of aim labs, and then log off for the night. Tens very clearly finds enjoyment in his warmups and routines, and you should try to do it as well. Another thing that really plays into taking the game less seriously though, is that it enables you to play a lot more aggressively as well. Which is the fourth thing that really stands out about Tens, is that he plays hyper aggressively in his games, especially on Jet, almost always making sure to be the first one into the fight and grab as much territory as possible. Now, to grapple onto this type of playstyle may not come immediately to all players naturally, especially considering it does take quite a bit of confidence in your aim. But similarly to our last tips, it's a lot more easy to play more aggressively when you put less weight on each individual death. Playing a hyper aggressive playstyle is definitely a harder thing to master, and you're likely going to mess up and make mistakes as you're getting used to it. You're likely even going to lose rounds because of getting over aggressive. However, it's important to learn from those rounds and adjust rather than playing back and being afraid to make mistakes instead. You have to be confident in your play and that's a reason being hyper aggressive works so well for Tens, he just bleeds confidence. This sort of hyper aggressive play style works incredibly well in competitive because unorganized teams often do not know how to deal with it. When you have a player dashing straight into you with their team flashing for them, it can be incredibly scary to deal with and when you hardly have teammates to back you up since everyone's playing a default setup, it can be a really big nightmare to deal with. Remember, as a duelist, you will set the pace for your team and if you're taking it slow, your team is going to have to take it slow as well. However, if you come out the gate swinging, your team is going to have to try to back you up. And if you're going to execute a push, you want to hit your opponents and you want to hit them hard. Take a look at how Tens plays throughout his rounds. He is always the first one on the site. He is leading his team with his actions and it makes for some really easy rounds for them. Moving on to the last thing that Tens does to carry his games though, and this is switching gears to the opposite side of the map. He never plays the same position twice. There are so many different off angles in the map and Tens uses all of them to full effect. Every obnoxious spot that he can catch the enemy off guard, he will take advantage of. One round he's going to be peeking out of B main and the next round he's out of garage. He's constantly mixing it up and keeping the enemy on their toes and he never gives them a chance to get too comfortable which when you're as good as a player as tens mixing it up is incredibly important because when you start fragging out players will start to avoid you either that or they will start to counter what you've been doing but tens remains unpredictable so it's very difficult to deal with even if you're going to be staying on the same site try to mix up the locations that you're playing and always keep in mind a couple of different setups that you can run to make sure you're constantly keeping your enemy on their toes lastly remember if you want to win more gunfights improve that kda and get the rank that you've always wanted, then be sure to check out skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Tens is a really big icon in Valorant at the moment, but as I mentioned before, the thing that stands out most to me about him is his passion for FPS games. 
One of the biggest issues I see in a lot of players is this that they take each individual game way too seriously to the point where they hardly even enjoy playing the game itself anymore. The biggest thing I think a lot of players can learn from him is just to play the game for the game and the competition. Strive to get better and improve your play and don't get frustrated with the small roadblocks in the way. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe down below. And also don't forget to answer our question of the day, which was, which agent do you think is the best at saving money? As always, I'm the King Live and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.